Listen, I'm just saying Shiv Roy is a terrible person. There's been a lot of discourse about Shiv's character since the finale, and I think it goes without saying that everyone on the show is a terrible person, but today we're gonna focus on Shiv. Throughout Succession, Sarah Snook and Jesse Armstrong have brought to life one of the most complicated, tragic, and perfectly performed characters on any show. But she's not the hero of the story. She is not a girl boss. She's an emotional, reactive, and childish character all the way until the end. Our position is this doesn't quite work for us at present. Did you find those contracts Roman asked for? Yes, I got them. Oh, I think you have the wrong ones. Did he change his mind? I'm just telling you, don't bring them in. Being the youngest and being a woman, she couldn't play the game like her brothers. In a constant effort to be taken seriously, she positioned herself in a way to play both sides so she can always come out on top. You know your client, the future senator? Apparently, this is her husband's asshole. What? I want you to call off your dogs. You're only here because your name matches the one card on the building. Shiv never felt secure vying for her father's love, constantly being passed up for a better option. So she, herself, keeps her options open. She does it in her relationships, asking Tom on their wedding night to be in an open marriage. Just not sure I'm a good fit for a monogamous marriage. Yeah, I kind of wish, I guess maybe, we talked about this before our wedding night. Wondering if there's an opportunity for something different from the whole box set death march. The box set death march? It could be exciting. Right. Maybe, I guess. When we both get divorced and split all our stuff, we can hook up and have the same set. She does it in her career, having one foot in politics, so her father has to bring her into the firm. You want to do it? Yes, of course I would be interested. If it's real, this is real. And she does it with her siblings, making a play with Madsen behind their back to be CEO. Could you send me a photo of their faces? Yeah, sure. Hey, Lucas. Yeah, listen. Uh, so they're gonna go regulatory. Subscriber numbers uh, being uh, being bullshit. Uh, well, not bullshit, but a um, little bit bullshit. What does a little bit bullshit mean? There is a time bomb in his numbers, and I might get blown up. Perfect. You know, uh, me as new. CEO, yes. Shiv attempts to disguise her betrayals with ethical ideologies, but when given the chance to actually act on her perfunctory platitudes, she ultimately chooses herself in a scheme that backfires so hard it leads the incredible fuckbrother bandwagon to elect a fascist president. I'm not standing next to him. I'll be in the photo, but not right by him. Could you try once direct to me? Yeah. Yeah. Do you talk to him? Uh, yeah, I think there's, uh, there's, there's something there. I think you're a good guy. Uh, well, I found it hard to get Nate, so I summarized. But you lied. Oh. Right? She didn't get anything from Nate. Really? She didn't speak to Nate. Even after everything, she only aligns herself with her brothers when she realizes she wasn't going to end up on top. Sorry. I'm sorry. And you know what? I'm actually tired of saying fucking sorry. I played it better. So why don't you take it like a man and just eat it? I've just had it confirmed. Lucas is interviewing for an alternative US CEO. He's fucking you. Bullshit. It, you it's confirmed. Have... It's sourced a number of contacts. Uh, I'm sorry, shit. You, yeah, you're sorry? Bullshit. Bullshit. Call whoever. It, like, it checks out. Hey. Okay. So. What do we do? She craves loyalty, but gives loyalty to no one. She believes she can treat anyone the way she wants, but when she gets a taste of her own medicine, she victimizes herself. You betrayed me! I mean, I think the obvious choice is... Tom. Excuse me? Yeah. No, Tom looks logical. What? Cruises, document destruction. What? I'm not saying that it should be. I mean, I'm saying you're like family, which is good, but also not family, which is kind of good. You were going to see me get sent to fucking prison! Oh, you offered okay. to go to jail, Tom! You offered because you're servile! You're just, you're servile! You're not good enough for me. Oh, right. That's why you want me, even though I don't love you. But you want me anyway. You have hurt me more than you can possibly imagine. And where do I fit in, Chef? Well, high up, Tom. I don't know. It, 
but we'll figure it out though. There's a lot going on. No, sure. And don't even get me started on Shiv using Tom for her own schemes while completely ignoring Tom's wants, needs, and ambitions. Talk to him when hungry. What? Yeah. I don't, I don't think I want to do that, Shiv. Uh, oh, hello? Is this the replicant department? Yeah, my meat puppet has stopped working. Hey, Shiv, Shiv. Can I just kiss you? Crawl in a circle and close your eyes. Too effing slow. Your dad was a little peppery. Oh. So, how's your weekend? Do you want to know? Oh, uh, I don't. Maybe later. And after a lifetime of conflating her father's love with being the top dog, when she realizes she can't win, she also realizes neither can Kendall. No, I just don't think you'd be good at it. Even Jesse Armstrong, the creator of the show, backed this up, saying, It was just a stomach-turning, visceral sensation because of that competition their father always encouraged, in which whoever won would also carry his love. It had this extra monumental meaning, and she couldn't see her brother win. Underlined or crossed out? Shit. I'm not saying for or against, I'm just, as a matter of fact, it's... Are you serious? Now, while I think Shiv made the right choice in the finale, Shiv wasn't altruistically saving her brother from a terrible fate. In reality, it was the opposite. In fact, the director of the show confirmed as much in an interview recently. Once Shiv learns about Madsen's betrayal, she pivots incredibly quickly by necessity. It's a survival mechanism. At that point, what's my least worst option? Bam! There's my new alliance with my siblings, and there's an elation that comes with that, walking away from that responsibility of ambition. But, of course, that's an illusion. Once they get back to New York, and the closer it comes to that moment where she has to raise her hand, Sarah knows instinctively to feel those layers, shedding those defenses, those delusions. When they're in Logan's office, she sees how Stewie and Kendall are a couple of cronies together, and she sees how sidelined she could be by that relationship. When Kendall puts his feet up on Logan's desk, there's that visceral, appalled reaction we see from Sarah. Once she had the swing vote, she realized she finally had Logan's power. But because Kendall fucked it. I'm the youngest boy! <laughs> she spitefully, understandably, couldn't give that power to her brother. As infuriating as it was to watch, her choice absolutely fit with the way she was written throughout the series. Shiv, listen, please. I beg you, listen. I can do this. An emotional, I don't like you. I don't, I don't even care about you. Reactive. I want us all to sign it for release to media tonight. It's a Times New Roman firing squad. Yeah, it's pretty horrible, you yeah. know. And childish. Well, you did make her husband's brain explode. Fuck you, man. Oh. Response to her not being top dog. Throwing away everyone's hopes and dreams out of spite. Please. Please. You can't be CEO. You can't, because you killed someone. Betraying her siblings, making the play that led to her best outcome. So now Shiv can unhappily ride into the sunset, settling for security after having her father's power for a brief moment to live her life as human furniture Tom's pregnant wife. An incredible, tragic character, but like everyone on the show, a very terrible person. Like the video.